Hi, everyone. I see that some people are still uh, entering, but we are going to start, so we, don't want to, we want to use the 45 minutes for questions and so on, so let's get started. Today, we are going to talk about what we have learned uh, adapting open telemetry. So what is my goal for today? My goal is like, maybe you have heard about open telemetry, maybe you're already using it, but my goal is like, you know how to use it in your company, in your product, and you take advantage of this talk, okay? So let's get started. Uh, before going to the talk, in the, to the talk, I'm gonna talk a little bit about myself. So I study computer science in, in Granada. Many of you might know the city. I moved to Sweden uh, for Erasmus uh, one year. It was a good experience because it allowed me to start working on a company uh, abroad. I started working on Ericsson. Here I was mainly doing like a Python a automation and so on. And then I, but everything wasn't as perfect as you can imagine. It was <laughs> cold and uh, snowy every day. So I get back to Spain. Uh, I started working on RTI. That was a really nice experience because uh, I was learning, uh, it was five years in that company, so I was learning many uh, fields. Um, here we were building a kind of middleware to communicate the data. Then I moved to the workshop. It's a company where I was doing microservices. And then I moved to, to Cisco. Uh, I work for Thousand Eyes in Thous inside of Cisco. What we do in Thousand Eyes is like we monitor the network. We identify when there is a drop, like Meta uh, is not working, or uh, Microsoft or whatever. We detect where it is failing, and then we, we let the customer about that problem. And here what I do mainly is uh, uh, stuff about observability and um, microservices. Okay, so now let's go to the meat of the talk. So I'm going to talk about open telemetry and about Thousand Eyes. So I want you to understand a little bit the company so you can understand why we adopted open telemetry. I'm going to talk about the architecture that we are using in our company. So how we are using open telemetry in our company. And the challenge is that we have a phase uh, starting using it. And then, of course, uh, a demo so you can see how that's really worked, but we have done it. Let's go to the introduction. Okay, so open telemetry. The way how we describe it is an open source to manage telemetry data. But this is not just a tool, it is a tool, an API, and an SDK, okay? So it is a collection of things. Um, but the most important part is it is used to manage telemetry data. Uh, what things can you do with open telemetry? You can instrument your code, you can collect the telemetry data, and you can export it to other observability backends. We have someone here from Grafana, so he, he will explain probably stuff about when you get data from open telemetry. And then the three pillars, as they are known from open telemetry, is like metrics, logs, and traces. They are also working on profiling, but this is not yet defined and not stable yet, but they will add a future signal. Yeah. So that picture now sounds weird to put it in a talk, but it's super nice the way how we see it. So for me, open telemetry is nothing more than the glue between your application. So all of you know those applications like Python, Go, front-end like uh, Spring or Django. So all of them are going to instrument with using open telemetry. And then you are gonna, they are going to generate, open telemetry is going to generate metric, traces, logs, everything that is needed. And then it is going to export it to all the observability backend that are around. So you can use AppDynamic, Splunk, Grafana, and many more. So just remember, open telemetry is the glue for your observability between your application and the visualization tool. Okay? Open telemetry, another good part is like it is vendor agnostic, which means that there is not a company behind. So it is not Grafana or it is not Cisco behind. So there is plenty of companies collaborating, making that project move on. Perfect. So how can I talk about open telemetry without talking about the collector? Uh, also, co the collector is going to be the main part of our architecture. So it is based also in three pillars. So we receive, the collector is a tool where we receive telemetry data. And the good thing is like it is flexible. It is, you can configure it as you want. So you can build it as you want. So you can receive data from Prometheus, open telemetry format, which is OTLP or Jaeger, or even a custom component, a custom receiver that you can build it to receive data from a database or from a web page or whatever. And then those ones are going to be receiving the data in parallel. And then we are going to go to the processor. In the processor, they are going to be sequential, one after the other. And here we are going to have components like 
attributes, like that one enrich your data. Imagine that you have data about your uh, user, but you want to add extra information about your user inside of those metrics, and so on. Filtering, this is quite important because maybe you don't want all your data to go through the pipeline. You want to drop some data because consider all is not needed anymore or might have customer information that you don't want to send or so on. Another one is also batching, quite famous. You want to group data points together so you export them to the observability backend in a more efficient way. Remember, as I said before, this is flexible and configurable. So you can create your own component to make whatever you need. There are plenty of components already built from the community that you can use them and even extend them. And the last but not less important is the exporter. The same that in the receiver we receive data in different format, we can export that data in different format and to different observability backend. The most famous one is OTLP exporter with gRPC or HTTP protocols behind, but you also can have Jaeger, Prometheus, or even send into a database as we said before from receiving. I don't forget the extension. Those are components that are general for all your pipeline, like the health check or the PPROF and many more. OK, now let's jump to Thousand Eyes. As I said, I don't want to talk about the company. I want just to give you a brief introduction. So what we do is like we monitor the network. We identify when there is like Monday.com is dropping state or Microsoft is, dro is dropping Virgin and so on. So we identify when one of our customers application is dropped in a place, and we identify when it was happening and why. And then, as you can imagine, we generate a lot of telemetry data, okay? We run those tests all around the planet, so those are the agents running those tests. We have those tests from us, but also inside of the customer infrastructure. So imagine that Amazon uh, have inside of his infrastructure agent from us running the, those tests, okay? So we have in and outside a customer infrastructure. And all this data is real time because why do you want to have um, and that there was an outage 20 hours ago? You want to know when the outage is right now. And then all those data is collected on test data, okay? What those test data happen? They are run periodically and they are accessible through a dashboard, as you can see here. So this is a network test that you can get the latency when you're calling an application, you can get the page load time, loss, throughput, and so on. Also, you can get the road, so how many barriers it has, it's reached to, uh, sorry, it's passed to reach in the destination, and so on. So here is the dashboard, but you also can access to an API. We get many telemetry data, like page load, throughput, and so on. Just for you to have an idea, we are gathering around 3K data points per second, which might not sound that much for you, but if you think that we have to process all of them and provide to the customer, it is a lot. Okay, so what are the motivation and goals of open telemetry to, sorry, of thousand eyes to start using open telemetry? So you're gonna need to understand the prior art as everything. So as I said, a test can access the data through an API or a dashboard. The API is a pool base, which means that the customer have to query that data as every endpoint. You have to call that data and you get a result. Perfect. But then if you think about it, if you need to create an integration to say it's time that my test data start failing, I want to trigger an alert or whatever, you have to create that integration manually, okay? And that is an effort that you, make to, you need to do it. Uh, then point right now only return the data in XML or JSON. So what are the motivation? Open telemetry is widely uh, adapted in the industry which means that we are not the only one using it. We have many other companies around, like Grafana, Elastic is in the door, so many companies are using it. Uh, the good thing is like all of them are creating many integration and frameworks, so all those observability backend can now read data from uh, open telemetry, and this is quite great because that gives us the ability to send the data in open telemetry and they to receive. So what are our goal? We are gonna facilitate the integration that I mentioned before that was quite hard. We are gonna facilitate that one. Now we are gonna be in a push API, which means that once we have the data, we are gonna send it. You don't have to pull it periodically. We are gonna, run, once we have it, we send it. And then it is a real time, as you can imagine already. Perfect. So before we jump into the architecture, you're gonna need to know the data model. So the test, you already know, it is at, you can see it as a dashboard or as a API. Perfect, everything clear. Now, sorry, 
I jump in one. Now we go to the tab. The tab is a way to group tests together, OK? Uh, the tag are identified by a key value. And here you have an example. It's open telemetry tech talk, and then a list of two tests associated with that tag. So this is another data model that we have internally. And this is the last one. So I'm not going to talk more about data model, but this is one of the most important. So it's a, an integration. Remember, we want to say which test data coming from the tag is going to be sent to which uh, observability backend. Here we have a good example. We are sending the observability backend to Grafana. And of course, we are going to need to use authentication. So you cannot send that data to Grafana without knowing that it's you. So you're going to need to authenticate in Grafana. So the integration is a way to say which test data you're going you to export to which observability backend. Perfect. And now how you associate everything that we have talked. The test. It's going to be associated with a tag, and the tag is going to be associated with an integration. So this is how we identify which test data we are sending to which observability backend. I hope everything is clear so far. <laughs> now let's jump into the architecture, the meat of this talk. I explained before that we have agents all around all the world, and those agents are the ones running those tests. Perfect. So those agents generate the telemetry data, sorry, uh, send the telemetry data using Kafka. And then we have two OTL collectors, the one that I explained on the introduction, that w the first one is going to receive the data from Kafka, is going to process that data, and it's going to export to the next collector. And the next collector is going to receive the data from that one, process, and export to the observability backend configured by the customer. In order to uh, have uh, the association and everything in real time, we are going to need to query a metadata service to get that extra data that we need. That diagram might be quite simple, so let's jump now to a more detailed one. So let's zoom in. And now you're going to see all the components inside of our both collector. Perfect. Uh, the reason why we have two collector instead of having just one connected with all the components, because at the end it is a pipeline. But the reason why we have two is for two reasons. First one is scalability. They are going to scale at a different piece, which means that metric collector is going to scale depending on how many test data are running. Remember, each test data is going to generate data. It's going to be sending through Kafka. And then we need that collector to receive all the data from all our tests. So as more tests there are, we are going to need to scale. And then that one is going to scale at a different piece. That one is going to scale as more integration are there, we are going to need to scale, because we are going to need to export to more observability backend. Perfect? That is the first reason. And the second one is domain. That one, we are going to process our metrics. So the metrics that we generate from Thousand Eyes, we are going to process here. Uh, in that collector, the main goal is to export to the different observability backend based on the integration. So two domains processing of metrics, and then exporting the integration. Now, let's zoom in inside of each collector and try to understand their component and the pipeline. We receive data from Kafka in a Kafka receiver. The Kafka receiver is one of the components that I mentioned before that was already built in. So we didn't create it. We extend it for our need, but we didn't create it. And then we go to the processor. In the processor, we are going to have Filter. So remember, we mentioned two things. F uh, we are going to have real-time data. Imagine that you have Kafka lag, and then you are going to have data points which are all. We are going to filter out all of them, because one of our definition of our product is like data is going to be in real time. So why do you want to receive data that was 10 minutes ago or 5 minutes ago? Next one is attribute. We are going to receive from Kafka data that mainly contain IDs, like test ID, agent ID, um, router ID, and so on. And we are going to get the data from the metadata service. And we are going to enrich that data. So we are going to have like the test name, the agent uh, type, and so on. So we are going to enrich our data point on that processor. And the next one is batching. You already know what batching is. We are going to group data to send together. <laughs> and then here, we are going to use an OTLP exporter to send the data to the next collector. 
In OTLP, there are two options. It is gRPC or HTTP. So we use gRPC in our case. The extension I will explain later on because they are shared with the other, uh, yeah, with the other collector. They are shared, so I will explain later. So now the integration collector is going to receive the data. So there is also an OTLP receiver who receives the data with gRPC. And then we are going to have a processor, which is the integration. All our data is going through the same pipeline. And one data point might go to two different observability backend. So what we do in the integration processor is replicate. If one data point is going to go to three in, um, observability backend, we are going to replicate here. Well, that data point is going to be converted into three, sharing the same attribute plus an extra attribute, which is the integration ID. I will go to those details later. I just wanted to, you to know. And now we are going to have our exporter. And here we are going to decide if the customer wants to send it through HTTP or gRPC. We will decide here using the OTLP routing. Perfect. And the OTLP routing will send it to the different observability backend that the customer defined, of course. And now let's get back to the same picture as before. And now you're going to see the different extension. We are going to have the health check. I imagine already all of you know that the health check is to know if the application, in our case, the collector is ready. So we read and reach all the data from the metadata service to create the our cards. Uh, the collector is ready. And then we can let the Kubernetes know that the pod is going to be ready. So later, we have the storage one. This is quite important because we query data from the metadata service periodically. And then we save it on that component in a cache. And that, that component is going to be called from all the other. So here is where we are saving all our memory, all our um, data. And then we have the event bus. It's a, nothing more than a pub sub. And here, when something is happening, we generate a, an event. And then, for example, the metric um, component is going to receive that event and increment a metric. For example, we also have the sentry um, component, which is mainly to catch every error and then send into the sentry uh, framework. And the last but not less important is metrics. So we observe our observability application. <laughs> so we also generate a bunch of metrics, logs, and traces of our system. And in the metric here, I can let you know, for example, like data point send, data point drop, how many data you receive from Kafka, how many data was dropped in the filter. So all those metrics are important for us. To know when there is a problem, we can easily go to Grafana and see those metrics are going up or down. Perfect. Now you already know our architecture. So let's go to the challenge. Because building that application, that product, wasn't easy. Between the challenge, I'm going to talk about data transformation. So remember, we received data from Kafka in thousandized format because they had before a, their own format. And then we need to transform into a OTLP format. Later, we need dynamic metadata. In mind that you're a customer and you create a test, a tag, and an integration. You need immediately to start seeing that data. So we need to dynamically adapt to the new creation and removal of test, tag, and integration. Multi-tenancy. Uh, ideally, we should have we, we could have a, a pipeline per customer. But the, in terms of cost, it is not possible. So we are going to have a pipeline with all our customer data. And then we are going to send it through. But we need to make sure that the data that we are sending go to the specific customer. We are not sending to other one. And you might think, OK, if we are sending telemetry data, why it is important? Remember, those data can be run inside of the customer infrastructure, which might give you like IPIs, max of your customer, and they don't want to that to happen. Health and liveliness. As I explained, we need to know when the pod is ready to let Kubernetes know that the pod is initialized, terminated, or crashing. Sentry, we need to send our error to Sentry so we can have a, a notification in time that there is an error on our application. Scalability. This is quite important because we need to scale not only on CPU or memory base, but as I mentioned before, we need to scale each time that we have a bunch of uh, integration created. So in mind, for example, that there is a Cisco Live demo, and there all our customers that go through the, the stand, they create an integration and still see the data. Maybe that day we created, I don't know, hundreds of integrations. So we need to scale our system to adapt. But not only that, in mind that there are many tests created, 
we need to scale our metric collector to adapt to that need. And the last but less important is observability. As I said, we need to observe our system. So we have open telemetry instrumented our system itself. So we are generating metrics, logs, and traces for us to understand how this, our system behaves. For today, timing, we only have time for the three, three first one to explain, but let's go to them. As I mentioned, we are going to need to convert from 1,000 eyes to open telemetry format. Our 1,000 eyes format could be like in JSON or Proto, because each test type we have like network, HTTP, page load, we have many. Each one is built by a different team, as that usually happens in all the companies. And each one has a different way to send that data through a different Kafka, in a different format, and so on. So we need to adapt to all of them. The data is also flat. If you remember when we were calling the query before, like the loss, the jitter, the latency, all those metrics were together in the same data point. So for 1,000 eyes internally, they are all together. But we need to know if you know about open telemetry metrics, a metric is just jitter or it's just latency. So you're going to have many together. And then, of course, each test type is going to have a different metrics and attributes. So how are we going to solve that problem? We are going to use Kafka. But the good thing is like for each test type, which is a different topic, we are going to have a different unmarceler. So we are going to have a different unmarceler for the pin, for the test, and then we are going to extract that data with that specific unmarceler. This is a diagram which I really like it because it explains what I am saying. So we have the Kafka test, sorry, the pin test, which is sent through Kafka. You have thousandized data. And then we are going to have our Kafka consumer with a, a marceler that is going to convert the data into an OTLP pin format and then send it to the next pipeline. A similar process with HTTP. HTTP, both of them are going to have like proto buffer format and both of them are going to behave similarly. And now we have another test type, which is in, in JSON. And that test type is quite different because it en encapsulates several of them together in the same JSON. So imagine a JSON with the P, with HTTP, and so on. So we need to extract that JSON in different um, and Marceler for each type and also convert it to open telemetry. So those one of the challenges that we have faced on our creating our system. This is an example how an open telemetry metric look like in JSON, I think. Yeah. So we have like the name of the metric, a description, a unit, a value. It's the goat is a value. And then a list of attributes related with that metric. So we can find out like the agent who ran that test, the test ID, the integration, the permalink. So you can click there and you can go to the dashboard that I explained before, and so on. Perfect. Now we go to the next challenge. Our next challenge is dynamic metadata. As I said, if you create a new test, you want to start seeing your data going to Grafana or to Splunk or whatever. So we need to adapt dynamically to our data. But not only that, we also need, I said before, like from Kafka, what we receive is mainly test IDs. Oh, sorry, IDs, like test ID, agent ID. So we need also to get all the tests, get all the agents, and enrich that data. So that needs to be done also dynamically, because that, imagine that a customer creates a new agent. We need to also put the name of the agent and the location dynamically. So all, all of this is done by creating a new component, which was the storage one. And we're going to have a catch, which is going to be based on key value. That catch is going to be refreshed uh, um, periodically calling the metadata service. So each time that we call the metadata service, we refresh that catch. If something has changed, we update it. And then that catch is going to be used through all our uh, components. So all of them are going to call that storage. I'm going to you, show you also another diagram. So we already received the data from Kafka, and we have two tests. Latency, test 1234, and 4321. Two tests, perfect. And now we go to the filter processor that I explained. We are going to have our storage, integration storage. And here we are going to see, like, for that test, it's associated with two integrations, which means that we are going to export that test to two different exporters. Perfect. That means that we have two data points, and that one is going to go through. But for the other two, which is 432, 
we don't have any test associated, we don't have that test associated with any integration. Which means that why do we want to continue in the pipeline? Why do we want to process and export and so on? We can already drop it here. Perfect. This is the first processor that needs dynamic metadata filter. And now we go to the next one, which is enrichment. We have here agent ID 60, and we have an agent storage. We have like um, 60 with agent name A and location US. So once it goes through, in the enrichment processor, we are going to add two new attributes, which is going to be the agent name and agent location. And now we go to the next pipeline. Perfect. Now I'm going to explain the next uh, challenge and also the last one. In that challenge is multi-tenancy. I explained that ideally we would have a pipeline per uh, customer, but this is not possible for cost reasoning. So we are going to need to create, we are going to send all our data points from all our customers in the same pipeline. Perfect. And we need to make sure that our data is sent to the specific observability backend configured by the customer. Remember, the customer is going to put a target endpoint like Grafana URL plus an authentication to access that Grafana. Perfect. The reason, as I mentioned before, is because the IAM might be running on the customer infrastructure and they might have important data from the customer. How are we going to solve that? With tenant aware, which means that the test, the tag, and the integration, all of them share the same account ID. So it means that all of them have the same uh, account when they are created. So only tests that have uh, that integration can send data to that integration only. And we are going to solve that using the routing exporter. So we are going to have for each integration a different exporter to, with the target that the customer have created. Perfect. And that uh, export is going to send the data to that integration. Let's go again to uh, a different example. We have already our data point as before, perfect. In the replication or integration process, as we mentioned, we are going to replicate it. So the test ID 1234 is associated with two integrations. Means that we are going to replicate here, and we are going to add also the integration ID attribute to each data point. Perfect. And now we go to the routing exporter. And here we are going to have, remember, two integration. For integration A, B, C, D, we are going to send it to the exporter one. I said, we are, uh, each integration is going to be an exporter. So here we are going to have the list of all the integration exporter, let's say. And the routing exporter decides to which exporter each data point goes, depending on the integration ID. Perfect. Now for the next one is that one, B, C, D, E, it's go to the exporter three. On that way, we make sure that multi-tenancy allow us to send our data point to the specific customer. OK, perfect. So now that you have seen how our architecture looks like, let's understand how our user can, use, can start streaming our data. So for the test today, I'm going to create a test, a tag, and an integration, and I start sending to Grafana. Let's jump into that. I hope the video works. Perfect. So I'm going to create a network test data calling Google with that agent. And this is going to be the test ID of my test. I'm going to create a HTTP, sorry, yeah, that is the, I'm going to create a network test also to Google. And now we are going to create our tag, open telemetry test talk for the tag. And now we are going to associate the two tests that we just have created with the tag. So we are going to put the, the tag that we just created, and now we are going to put there the two IDs. So the first one from the HTTP test that is going to call Google, and the other one is from the network test. We get the test ID, and then we put in the association body. Perfect. And then once we have it, we click Send, and we are going to now associate the tag to the two tests that we have just created. And now let's go to the integration. We are going to create an integration with that tag to Grafana, and perfect, let us start the integration being created. And now the data is going to be start sending it. Perfect. And now we have another a video where you're going to see that those tests that we just have created through the API, when you call it, they are really receiving uh, sending data. So this is the HTTP test with that agent. And here we are going to have things like response code, uh, DNS time, 
uh, wait time, receive time, and many more things, respond. So we are going to have all the results of our test and API, so you can see how it is accessible. And now we are going to go to the network test that also is generating already results. So this is the test ID, test name. Also, we have here the agent. We have also here a latency, jitter, and loss. So those are the three metrics for the network test. And for the HTTP, we have like response time, um, availability, and throughput, you will see now, in Grafana, that we already have those data. So those tests that you see is data that they have previously, but now you're going to start seeing from the new test. So this is coming from the new test. On the HTTP test, we are going to have throughput, response time, and availability. For the new three, sorry, for the new two tests that we have created. So this is the new one. And availability is already there, if you see. And now for the network test, we are going to have also latency, loss, and jitter, as I explained. And now you are going to start seeing the new test ID, which is there. Perfect. And the same for the loss. It's there, I think. Yeah, perfect. And then the same for the, for the jitter. OK? With that, I want to conclude that we create our test. The test has start running. And then we export our test using open telemetry. Perfect. And then you can see it on Grafana, but you also can see on Splunk or any other observability backend that you are interested in. Remember, this is a open telemetry format, so any observability backend that can get it, you can visualize your data there. Um, and then to close in the, the talk, I said what we have learned. So I would like to say what we have really faced and learned. One of the problems was the open telemetry data model was kind of limited. So we have only traces, metric, and logs. And for a trace, you only have like the name, description, value. So we were missing some information. Um, also, when I start creating a new component, it's quite challenging. So we created a few of them. It might be uh, was a little bit challenged to make it work then. But once you make it work, adding new functionalities was quite easy. And make it then work with the rest of the things, it's quite easy. Because remember, the collector is just a place where you are adding different components, and all of them are going to talk together. There are plenty of components already around, and all of them are easy to extend. One good, exam good example is the um, Kafka. Kafka we have extended for the different Marceler. So different Marceler for the different test type. And the last but not less important is the community. There is a huge community behind. Uh, you can make questions to them. You can uh, create a GitHub issue. You can even collaborate. We have collaborated with a few uh, bugs that we have found out. And they are quite nice. You, there is also a Slack channel that you can make questions, that they post many things. So yeah, this is quite useful. And um, yeah, this is the end of the talk. Uh, now it's time for questions or feedback or anything is welcome. Thank you so much, guys. Any question around? Pues, we can do the eh, la pregunta en español, inglés, como preferáis, para que os sintamos cómodos, ¿vale? Todos bienvenidos. Nadie se anima, nadie tiene ninguna duda sobre arquitectura, sobre open telemetry, ninguna sugerencia. <laughs> Por aquí me he empezado ya, bien, bien, bien. Muchas gracias. Rompiendo el hielo. Una pregunta, al tener solo un, un pipeline para todas las integraciones, ¿habéis, ¿habéis sufrido algún problema de escalabilidad porque algún cliente tenga muchas integraciones y el resto tenga poquitas? Es decir, que uno afecte a otro. Vale, eh, tenemos muchísimos test types, creo que tenemos alrededor de 25 test types, ¿vale? Y no todos tienen que tener los mismos eh, procesos, o algunos test types tienen, le añadimos gente, otros test types tienen otro tipo de información útil, entonces tenemos agrupamos test types que tienen los mismos eh, procesos, entonces de esa manera lo sabemos. Con tu pregunta de escalabilidad, ha sido uno de los problemas más grandes que hemos tenido, porque normalmente la mayoría de los servicios los escalamos respecto a la memoria y a la CPU, pero cuando recibes de Kafka es distinto, porque necesitas escalar rebalanceando tus Kafka, ¿vale? Entonces eso es uno de los problemas que teníamos, y luego a la hora de enviarlo a la otro, al Integration Collector, si enviaban las mismas métricas a los, a los mismos iba a duplicar los datos, por así decirlo de alguna manera. Entonces, eso es uno de los grandes problemas, la verdad. 
Pero sí, sí, hemos tenido al final que separarlos, no por clientes, sino por tipos. Pero ha sido bastante <ríe> difícil esa parte. Muchas gracias por preguntar. Buenas. Eh, una pregunta sobre Open Telemetry. ¿El Trace ID lo puedes generar tú, de manera manual? Eh, en la charla de hoy no hemos hablado de eh, tracing, pero sí también tenemos. No sé si acordáis de, del slide donde teníamos la, la ruta. Es eh, decir... Mm -mm. Aquí, vale. Esto al final es un trace route. Imagino que muchísimos los conocéis, ¿no? Que va saltando por distintos gateways y demás. Eso al final, la, como la manera que lo transformamos, es un, eh, un spam cada cambio. Y tiene un montón de información, ese spam, un montón de atributos. Eh, nosotros, eh, cuando creamos los, las trazas, eh, Open Telemetry te genera el trace ID por ti. Pero tú puedes modificarlo, ¿vale? Tenemos otro escenario que es eh, page load. En PageLoad no es más que un hard lo que genera. Imagino que todos aquí conocemos lo que es un hard, eh, que tiene todas las requests cuando tú cargas una página. Imaginemos que esa request ya tiene un trace ID. Entonces, cuando nosotros estamos creando nuestro spam, utilizamos el trace ID que viene del hard. Entonces, podemos hacer ambas cosas. O autogenerarlo, que es lo normal, lo que por defecto, o sobreescribirlo. Entonces, además, creo que responde tu pregunta, ¿no? Sí, que... lo digo porque nosotros tenemos un microintegrator con WS2, que hace saltos entre los microservicios y sale eh, a un Apache Kafka, vuelve a recuperar y queremos trazar toda la línea. Entonces, claro, puedes sobreescribirlo para exacto. que puedan unir las trazas. Exacto. Y en una visualización tool, por ejemplo, Jagger, puedes exacto, para ver claro. trazas, puedes verlo fácilmente todo unido. Sí, en Jagger ya te une todo. Con claro, si tiene el mismo 3 ID, sí. lo que se diferencia son las PAN ID. Sí, sí, Así que, perfecto. Vale, perfecto. Muy buena, muy útil. ¿Alguna pregunta más? Hola, una pregunta sobre el tema de, 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 de cómo tenéis una arquitectura multitenant, entonces al final podéis saber de, digamos, a, a grano fino qué cliente os llama más y todo eso. Y digamos que en mi empresa también estamos interesados en, en algo parecido. Y a nivel de costes, ¿no? ¿Le cargáis, utilizáis OpenTelemetry para hacer eso, para saber... ¿Cuánto tenéis que cobrarle a un cliente o cuánto no? Vale, como comenté, teníamos métricas de nuestros propios collectors, ¿vale? Entonces, la manera en que lo hacemos es eh, la métrica de mmm, data be sent. Esa tenemos un atributo que sería el account ID. Si ese account ID es de esa métrica, imaginamos que un cliente tiene mil métricas por segundo y otro tiene 10.000, aquí es donde estás viendo la diferencia, ¿vale? La manera en que cobramos es distinta. La manera en que cobramos es por número de test que creas. Es una, una manera que ya ha funcionado antes que nosotros creamos esto de Open Telemetry. Entonces, cada test que creas es un nuevo, eh, tiene un pago extra, ¿vale? Como un consume datos, por así decirlo, de nuestros agentes. ¿Vale? Entonces, la manera que costeamos. Pero sí vemos qué eh, en cuentas nos están utilizando y cuáles están utilizándonos más para pedirle feedback, para hacer demos con ellos y demás. Pero Genial, sí. gracias. Solo, solo un pequeño comentario, no sé quién ha preguntado por ahí delante de Tracing, ¿vale? Mañana eh, vamos a estar hablando de propagación de contexto, tanto José como yo, eh, creo que en el tráfico a la una menos cuarto ahora sí, por si quieres ver cómo funciona el tema de propagar contexto automáticamente y que no tengas que estar haciéndolo tú, a mano, ¿vale? Ah, vale, perdón. <risa> Esa es muy buena, muy buena. ¿Alguna preguntilla, chicos? ¿No nos salimos? Bien, por ahí otro. Bueno, primero, gracias por la charla. Muchas gracias. Eh, a ver, yo eh, estoy usando Hotel también para, con Spring Boot para propagar las trazas y tal. Eh, entiendo que el enfoque que dais son métricas a bajo nivel o qué tipo, porque una de las necesidades que tenemos es también en, en el sistema de trazabilidad que estamos montando, sacar un poco también estadísticas más de negocio alto nivel, porque no sé si... ¿Vuestras métricas son de bajo nivel, consumos de memoria, ping o también cómo lo se puede plantear para sacar más estadísticas orientadas al negocio? Vale, muy buena pregunta. Al final esto depende de ti, ¿vale? Nosotros, como he dicho, tenemos test dentro de Thousand Eyes que generan un montón de métricas como latency, page load, loss, throughput, jitter y muchas más, ¿vale? Esas métricas son las que nosotros enviamos, es decir, lo que nosotros al final hacemos es un... Eh, streaming of the Thousand Eyes Data, ¿vale? Pero inter internamente, respondiendo a tu pregunta, nosotros utilizamos OpenTelemetry para instrumentar nuestro código 
Y ahí es, Open Telemetry se está creando métricas de, mmm, por así decirlo, también de, de nuestro sistema, como cada vez que llama un endpoint se incrementa una métrica, cada vez que un endpoint falla también otra, eh, número de, en la memoria, la CPU, todo eso son métricas que Open Telemetry te va a generar cuando lo instrumentas tu aplicación. ¿Vale? Entonces, tú eres el que decide. Y luego tú también puedes manualmente crear las métricas que tú quieras y se envían automáticamente con OpenTelemetry. ¿vale? Entonces, esto depende de vosotros. Podéis utilizar las que ya te dan, gratuito, gratuito, bueno, sin que tengas que modificar nada, me refiero, o tú creando las tuyas. Para nuestro escenario lo que hacemos es, las, las test data son los que estamos enviando a través de OpenTelemetry a nuestros clientes, que pueden estar utilizando Grafana, como había aquí un chico antes, o cualquier otro, como Splunk, Datadog, cualquiera. ¿Vale? Entonces, Tú tienes la misión de decidir qué, qué métricas quieres generar. Vale, gracias. ¿Alguna preguntilla más, chicos? Bueno, pues muchas gracias por venir, por las preguntas y espero que haya gustado.